it's my turn. No, I'm going to go. I'm going to do this. You know, I'm going to do that. Hey, I'm going to do that. It's a initiative. It's a base concept in most RPGs, most tabletop war games. Uh, it can be as simplistic as flipping a quarter or, you know, rock, paper, scissors. That's the old school. Who gets to go first in a given situation? You know, I'm a big fan of the concept of it, of course, because it simplifies, uh, you know, a lot of things. It makes it so they're uh, less likely to have arguments among the players and uh, hurt feelings, of course. Uh, on the other hand, uh, there is such a thing as like a lot of uh, mechanics, uh, game mechanics is taking the, the, the concept to, to the extreme. This isn't necessary to do things uh, in that way, I don't think. Uh, in my own ex personal expenses, experiences after 40, year, 40 years or four decades of being a GM, uh, some of my uh, uh, personal preferences when it comes to initiative is to determine it based off of the individual situation in a given situation. Of course, the standard fallback or the standby for the, uh, in most game systems are amongst groups anyway, is the, uh, was it, uh, the line of order, the order of march, however you want to look at it. This is where everybody picks an order and says, okay, Fred's, Fred's the tank, he's going to go in front, the archer's uh, second, the wizard's third, uh, and the cleric's bringing up the rear, whatever. And that's fine for the average, you know, we're on a trek from here to there. Uh, but in reality, if you think about it, most encounters don't occur in a pre-established, preconceived uh, formula. Uh, an ambush is an ambush. Uh, you know, a, a, if your group is spread out and you're attacked from the sides, well, your line of order just, you know, went out the window. Uh, another concept of initiative, of course, is the specialist or the specialist uh, class where, you know, a, a rogue, you know, the old thieves, as we used to call them. The rogue is the crime example of that, the assassin. They have a, a plethora of feats and skills and uh, magical stuff that give them the ability to get the jump on uh, a, an opponent in a given situation. And once again, I've always chose to look at the individual situation and see if they have the advantage or not. Uh, sometimes it's, you know, it's inarguable and it is what it is, but that doesn't always apply for the group. Uh, that is another concept that, uh, has its point in place. The group initiative this is where we roll for one, one set of, uh, one set of initiative to see which side gets to act first in a given situation. Uh, I'm a fan, like I said, of spontaneity and of the curveball. So sometimes when I have a group that's pretty confident in how things are going to go and they have a formula that works, I try to throw a snowball from the left side to take them from uh, their plateau of perfection and throw them into mitigated chaos to see how it plays out. Because some of the best game sessions, in my opinion, uh, come out of uh, the left field where nobody's, everybody's expecting A to happen and D comes along. And it's a mad dash or uh, a, a brain racker to figure out how do we counter or, or cope with or better escape from the scenario that just threw it, that just got thrown in front of our feet. The uh, you know a, as a GM for new GMs, by all means use the initiative, especially when you're using or you're playing with newer players that that aren't confident or aren't quite on board with how things work in uh, your world, uh, but don't overuse that tool. And that's what it is, it's a tool, like all the mechanics in the game system. It's appropriate use at a given point in time. Uh, can be misused or abused in some aspects because uh, I've made the mistake in my early days of, of going too much by the mechanics of the books. The uh, point then is, is we end up with a session where we spend a lot of time flipping through pages and comparing notes and then arguing interpretations of what we think the particular rule or, or uh, sidebar is supposed to mean in the given situation that everybody's in. 
and that ends up slowing down the gameplay and or worse stalling it completely or, or making it so somebody if not everybody is totally ready to move on to something completely different and we've just you know hijacked the uh what could have been an entertaining afternoon and turned it into a you know a rules doctor session which unless that's what your thing is and you're into doing that sort of thing hey do what you're gonna do right yeah far be it for me to say anything another concept of initiative that i like is i play it in the uh in the middle of a situation in a given situation. This is where your specialists start to take uh, a shine, I think, or the lucky roll, if you will. Uh, I, I'm a big fan of the, the, the base crits and the utter fails. So if an opponent or a player uh, rolls a d20 and on their initiative it's an automatic win, but it may give, I might give them some edge or advantage over their foe or maybe an extra move that they didn't you know otherwise wouldn't have had uh another option is to give them a, the mulligan or a uh delayed reaction and you know the rules cover the concept of delayed reaction but and and i've played those where okay fred goes first and joe goes second monster one goes third you know andy goes third or fourth, and so on and so forth, and that involves a lot of keep uh, paperwork, making sure you keep everything track in track. Now, the easiest way to do that I've discovered was to have some little chits or a checkbox uh, sheet of paper where I can go, mm, okay, one, two, three, four, and just you know, so you can glance at it and go, everybody can glance at it and see whose turn is what. But another method in in house is uh, the bad guys get the initiative and we work out through that first first encounter and part way through the encounter uh, our rogue comes up and the rogue says you know this 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 is what i want to do and as a gm as a as a mediator of the game as the storyteller uh or the story coordinator because we're all part of that story we're all creating a, a joint story together and i i go and i look at that and i think you know something there jim you got an idea there you know, why don't you roll with that? Uh, roll an initiative. See if you can't get the drop on this guy or see if you can't do this thing that you envision you want to do. Can you do it in such a manner that it gets past the bad guy, even though because the bad guy's got the drop on you? Uh, now, in pure chaotic uh, chaos uh, combat where everything's out the window, uh, sometimes that's a situation that's hard to control. Uh, on the other hand, uh, when things are going south, let's say, uh, and, and this can happen. Any experienced GM, uh, will tell you this, this is part of the joy of the game or the frustration of the game. At some point you have a well-crafted encounter and everything should have been easy for the players to achieve some reason or another uh they're they're just having a terrible time over uh, overcoming the encounter or worse what should have been a cakewalk is suddenly turning into a nightmare because all the roles are just not in their favor at that point uh, i might throw in and ask for initiative and uh, this is to see you know if they give them an opportunity to trump uh their opponent and get one up on them or give them that out that dodge, if you will, you've successfully rolled your, uh, you've successfully rolled your, uh, your initiative or reaction in, in uh, my Stellar Frontiers game system. Uh, you reacted to the situation, and what you're gonna, what are you gonna do? You got a moment, to, uh, a free action, if you will, where you can pursue, continue the fight, or bail. You know, here's your opportunity to, to bail. And sometimes we do this as a group initiative and, and sometimes as individual initiatives. Because <clears throat> sometimes if one character will run and see a situation is uh, very stacked against them, the rest of them will take notice and go, well, what are you doing, yeah, Jim? And Jim's arguing that the dragon is a dragon. Uh, let's go. 
<laughs> we we don't belong here and he's angry so let's leave him a bit. let's let's leave our dragon buddy here alone and come back later when we have the beans and the ability to you know whack this guy or whatever we need to do and uh so forth now you know of course like i said there's a lot of ways to use these things and use them creatively uh another option i've used initiative roles for is to uh when i'm looking at what the npc is doing <clears throat> this this is my take on NPCs in general. I like to treat them as another player in the room that I'm mediating for. Uh, I don't necessarily want to be the puppet master of all the bad guys and the beasties and things like this. And, of course, you'll argue that that's what the GM is for. The GM is supposed to control this sort of stuff. Sure, you're right. I, I represent this individual, and I control the stats and, and their actions to a certain degree. But sometimes it's fun and totally chaotic in some aspects if you roll an, a reaction or an uh, initiative to... Uh, for them to see if they decide they want to bug out or they want to react in a different way or if they're going to act somehow outside the preconceived box of what what's both you and the group think the particular uh, NPC or bad guy is supposed to do. Uh, in my Stellar Frontier system, which is designed from the, from the floor up for solo play, the entire system is set up to determine random roles for encounters so if your if your platoon of militia is encountering a bunch of, of pirates and uh you're fighting them solo you know you're playing your side but you also as a the controlling uh, or the the house lord splash player you have to control your bad guys as well well it's hard to play against yourself i've played trust against myself and well frankly you cheat or you manipulate or you maneuver things to your advantage on the other hand if the game system like Stellar Frontiers has <clears throat> a set of charts and the mechanics for reactions and actions for your NPCs or your opponents, then it makes it simpler for you to go to the go to the table, so to speak, and roll the cards, add the modifiers, and say, ah, oh, I can't believe they did this. Or they're pursuing, or they're pressing the fight, or they are maneuvering, trying to, to get themselves in a better position and eventually you get this chain of these totally random seeming roles that uh, uh, lead into a passable scenario that you didn't have to hack out yourself well do uh in, in a D, &D sort of game uh do you do you do all that stuff on a regular basis no no I, of course not but you can give yourself a little bit of hey <laughs> Oxnaw here, the ogre, he's the one that just decided to go off on a tangent here, folks. It wasn't my part. I just saying I rolled and he had the initiative and he decided he's going to go eat your horse. Sorry. You know, what are you going to do to stop him? Huh? What are you going to do to stop him, right? Uh, meanwhile, I've been uh, previewing a bunch of other the uh, video blogs of numerous GM uh, uh, advocates and supporter uh, fellows out here who, you know, are trying to share a bit of wisdom. And there's some pretty interesting people with some good concepts and some good voices. I wish I was half as good as some of you guys. Oh, speaking of which, old Grandar, Grongar, Gronging. I'm sorry, I'm terrible with names. You know, I was looking at one of your After Dark sessions and I saw your hat and I thought, ah, oh, Indiana Jones in the 80s. Which, my friend, I was a child of the 80s, too, I guess. I was a young man, teenager, coming into my own at that time. And yes, I, too, bought myself one of those wonderful hats. And I'm telling you right now, these are a beautiful thing. This hat here is 20, 30 years old, 25 years old, 30 years old. 30-some years old, 32, because I bought it when I was 18 years old. And, and other than, you know... A little bit of dust because it was in storage because I've been uh, out of the picture for a while. But the uh, fact is it still fits, and it's a great wear, and it's a style. that don't ever go out, my friend. And I appreciate your reminding me of this because, you know, a good fedora is worth a lot of straw hats. Yes, sir. And uh, on that note, I'll let you uh, get on about your daily business, and uh, 
hope that uh, you enjoy yourself and you find some good good gaming out there and remember that no matter what you do uh, everything is dependent on the roll of the die